Hi, I'm Dan from Awareful, and here's three simple tips as a beginner that's going to make your meditation practice flourish. Now, I wanted to put this video together because when I first started, I struggled big style. And I wish there was a video like this that would help me, would have helped me to get through the, the early stages of my practice. When I first came, I sat and had all these expectations. And that's number one, removing any expectations that you're going to get anything out of this practice. Because what you need to recognize is that all the scientists out there have gone out and proved that you will be less stressed, you will sleep better, you will be a little bit more creative, you'll be more compassionate, you'll be more understanding, you'll be more empathetic, you'll be all these wonderful things, healthier. But you just need to get yourself out of the way. An expectation we can all of a sudden we sit and we go, all right, this is my stress-free meditation. I'm going to be less stressed after this practice. And we sit and get into a pose. Maybe we're lying down. That's okay. We sort of, oh, and we're halfway through and we're still feeling stressed. And that just stresses us out more. We're like, I'm supposed to be doing the stress-free meditation here. Why is it not working? I'm a failure can't even meditate. Simple. Put a headphones on and just listen. I'm getting more stressed doing it. So remove any expectations. Every time you come and sit for your practice, don't try and remember what the last one was like. Don't t listen to other people in the room when they're talking about how amazing it was. Just recognize that meditation is how you are right now. As a definition, you know, derived from the Tibetan word gom, which means to become familiar with. All we're trying to do is practice becoming familiar with how we are now, without the weight of expectation that we add to it. And going and seeing a good teacher to help you to transform how you are now, the reality that you are now, into being more compassionate, less stressed, less anxious, will happen naturally on its own. And like I said, you've got all the wonderful evidence there to help support that. You just need to get out of your way. Number two, don't come trying to think that you're going to stop thinking. Now I got, this is where I got stuck. When I first started, I first, I struggled with acute anxiety disorder and chronic depression. And when I first started, I, I wanted to get rid of these negative thoughts that I had. I wanted to get rid of them. And I'd be willing to try everything. And I thought meditation was another one of these things that I could start doing that's going to get rid of the thoughts. And so I actually made myself more frustrated, more anxious, because I was trying to stop thinking. Now, I remember saying to my teacher, I said, this practice just doesn't work. And he said, what do you mean it doesn't work? And I said, I feel more stressed. You know, I'm, I'm, I can't get rid of the thoughts. I can't, I can't remove them. They won't go away. And he just smiled and he says, Daniel, there's only one time in your life that I want you to stop thinking or that you will stop thinking. And let's not have that happen today. So this practice, remembering gone, familiar with, is not about stopping anything. You know, meditation isn't defined by trying to stop something. It is about flowing with life. So we're not trying to stop thinking. Get any idea of stopping thinking out of your mind, if you can. And just be with what rises, the practice of awareness. We bring some attention, bring some kindness to the fact that we are thinking and try and change how we react to that frustration, to that sense of failure, to all these inbuilt negative thought patterns that we have. And number three, it's not about relaxation. Some practices you'll find are incredibly unrelaxing. Yeah, so it's not about coming and trying to relax. Relaxation is a wonderful byproduct of it. It's not the goal though. The goal is to begin to understand intricately how we're relating to our environment 
What is it about life that is getting us frustrated, that is getting us sad, that's getting us down and working a little closer bit by bit with that, bringing in some compassion into those moments rather than being left with a sense of failure when things go wrong. Now, relaxation, particularly with some meditations, will happen naturally. You know, I have loads of people that just fall asleep during practice. That's not because of the meditation. That's because they're tired. <laughs> How many times I've done lunchtime sessions and during the lunchtime, there'll be three or four people in the boardroom, middle of the day in their suits, <laughs> snoring away. And then when I boom, play the bell, they wake up and they say, how'd you find that? And they're like, oh, that was really relaxing, that one. Really relaxing. And I'm like, that's because you were asleep. It could have been more relaxing. Now, if you're just using meditation to help you to get to sleep at night, then amazing. But this is not the goal of the practice. It is a byproduct of it. The goal of meditation is to recognize your conscious awareness and bringing some consciousness into that moment so that you're not fleeting around worrying about everything else. You're just bringing that attention over and over again, consciously. And as I said, a byproduct of that is relaxation. You'll feel calmer, less stress, less reactive. So if you enjoyed the video, I'd love to know. Maybe there's a couple of other uh, tips that you'd like to give, and I'd love to hear them on the comment section. But please subscribe to the page, share, like, do whatever you can do. I want to get the message out there about the importance of this incredible, potentially life-changing practice. Have an amazing rest of your day. And I hope to see you again in one of the upcoming videos. Or check out some of the meditations. Anyway, see you soon.